Past experiences are more valuable than handfuls of memorized rules. Control is more important than raw speed, talent, and agility. Information is more critical than ammunition. Winning fights is less about how and what and more about the why. Honing your ability to take in information from all around you and using it to control situations will be more significant to your growth as a competitive PC shooter than anything else. Over the course of the roughly 60 second engagement that follows, I made nearly 50 discrete decisions about how to handle the situation. Every second I'm taking in information of all kinds from all around me and running it through an algorithm that my intuitions have created for me throughout my years of playing first person shooters. Whether you realize it or not, you do the exact same thing. Now everyone's algorithm is different and there's no right or wrong, just data driven decisions and opportunities to learn from them. I'd like to share with you one of my recent experiences where information and control were the keys to my success. Let's learn from my mistakes and my successes, and hopefully there will be something interesting or novel that we can all gain from this exercise. This is the anatomy of a firefight. Right on, Punisher. Thank you, man. I'm dead. I'm so dead. off dude I'm, I just got stuck I got stuck and I die because of it After looting an enemy I killed and largely becoming disengaged from any known threats, I suddenly heard footsteps nearby. Now I can hear the hollow sound of wood and based on the sound volume in the left channel of my headphones being noticeably louder than my right channel, although still audible in my right channel, I knew the general direction from which the sound was coming from. Coupled with my knowledge of the layout of the map and the knowledge of the current state and ambiguity of vertical audio in the game, I had a pretty good idea that the sound is either coming from the wooden staircase nearby or in the arsenal room above me. This is threat number one. Right on, fun. Now at this point I could tell there were two discrete pairs of footsteps, so knowing that I'm facing multiple enemies changes how I'm going to be approaching this situation. Now I'm usually pretty confident in straight up one-on-one -on -one fights, but if you try to take on two skilled players who are ready for you, your chances of success fall to nearly zero. Remembering I just killed a few players prior to this fight and hadn't had time to reload or really get situated after looting, I needed to get a quick sit rep to determine if I was equipped to survive a fight with multiple enemies. Now I know we've got threats one and two. Sure, thank you, man. I'm dead. I'm so dead. Having an unknown number of rounds in my magazine and an unsearched enemy rig with god knows what inside, I wasn't feeling too confident at this point. I could hear the enemy pick up an item to my left. And although there are a couple different places this could technically be, I felt pretty confident that they were looting whatever random food items spawn at the end of the hallway to the left by the vending machine that usually spawns there. Now this is just one more example where map knowledge, even in the subtleties, can be invaluable. Now also, knowing that they picked up an item also confirms that I'm not facing AI raiders. These are real PMCs. Now surprisingly enough, this actually made me feel better about my chances. Now at this point I decide to search my rig as I'll be unable to reload without doing so. Not being able to reload is going to be a death sentence, so at this point I risk it. Now I know all I need to do is wait for the initial reveal of the contents, not the entire searching process, to identify the magazines that I brought in with me to see what my ammo situation was. Now all I know at this point is I had two reloads at my disposal, but no idea how many rounds in each. Now I also know that the sound I'll make searching will be enough to let the enemies know I'm there if they're paying attention but sometimes providing some crumbs of information to your enemies can actually give you a tactical advantage if you're prepared for it. The fact that I'm right on the other side of the door searching might make them think that my guard is down or that I'm unaware of their presence, which can actually give me an advantage if I'm ready and paying attention.
Now, at this point, I noticed a bunch of folks in chat spamming Monka S empty mag and stuff like that. So I'm suddenly distracted by the prospect that my current magazine is empty and I'm about to go click before being murdered. So stupidly right now is when I decide to check the magazine and also give my headphones a quick adjustment. All that neat planning and preparation I was doing was now gone. Fuck! Mistakes were made. Fuck off, dude! Now, at this point, I know two separate grenades were thrown. I don't yet know where they landed, but I know I don't want to run out towards two different enemies, so I decide to roll the dice and try to survive the explosions in the room. Now, if I'm lucky enough to survive, I don't want to get quickly repeaked by the enemy while I'm recovering from injuries or the shock of the blast, so I quickly decide to shut the door before I try to get to cover to buy me an extra second or two of recovery time. Doors can be an extremely powerful tool, as you're going to see in situations like this. They give you a small amount of additional control over a situation for which you have very little control over and prevent enemies from immediately re-peeking you or tossing nades in without first telegraphing their move by opening the door. Now one grenade sounded like it landed to my left, which I believe means it ended up going down the hallway on the other side of the wall, so it was no longer a threat. Now one landed to my right inside the room. Now at this point I know the grenade is somewhere between me, the wall, some bunk beds, a bench, and some other random stuff that at this point I really can't visualize. Now I know many of these objects block shrapnel, and besides stuffing myself in the closest corner I can find, facing away from the blast will provide me with the best chances of survival. Now it's mostly my arms and legs that are at risk now, and there's even a chance, depending how far the grenade rolled, that the small amount of filing cabinet covering my right side will block the brunt of the shrapnel. I'm, I just got stuck! I got stuck and I die because of it! Now after the explosion, quickly glancing up at the upper left-hand corner of my screen, I see no indication of injuries, so I'm fairly certain that I made it out of this surprisingly untouched. Now, I also quickly checked the door that I closed for the immediate re-engagement from the enemies who were last known to be right outside. The door's still shut, so I decided it's time to try to reposition to get myself out from being trapped in a room with two entrances against two enemies. Now, I realize this door is still open, and I hear a couple footsteps to my close left. So I know one of the enemies is approaching me from this doorway, but I don't think they're close enough to be re-peeking me at this very moment. Now, I realize how much of a disadvantage I'm at right now, having my back turned to one doorway and an enemy approaching from another. So I decided to try to use one of the most successful tricks to try to take control of this fight. The best way to win when you're solo against multiple targets working together is to act faster than they have a chance to communicate and isolate a 1v2 into two separate 1v1 engagements. Now, if two enemies are splitting up to engage you from two different angles, the worst thing you can do at this point is let them push you at the same time. Do not give them time to coordinate a push together. Now I find that the enemies I play against when they're in teams act pretty predictably to a number of different things that I do. Teams are more often than not reactive. Oftentimes people wait for their teammate or the enemy to do something before they decide what to do. Now if I'm playing a duo and there's one guy sitting in a room with two doors on opposite sides and my teammate's suddenly engaged by that one player, I know that's the perfect time to strike as they have their back turned or their guard down. Now as a solo player, I can use this common gut reaction of players on teams to my advantage. Now in this scenario, neither of the doorways is big enough for two enemies to come through, and I'm confident that one will be pushing from each door, but again, I don't want it to be coordinated, so I decided to use one of my Swiss Army Knife tactics that has saved me time and time again. Blind firing a short burst like I did here was done with a few different ideas in mind. First, I wanted to slow down the approach of the closest enemy and the biggest threat. There's also a small chance that my shots did some damage or maybe even got a lucky kill, but that wasn't my main goal. Now this attempt was both an offensive and a defensive move, slowing down threat number one and serving as a strategic bluff, hoping that I could bait out to push on threat number two, as he likely wouldn't assume that I'd be ready and waiting for the door to swing open after I just fired rounds off at his friend. Alright, so he didn't take the bait. Let's reset and try another strategy. Close the door and relocate to keep them guessing. You always need to picture this scenario from your enemy's perspective. It's pretty chaotic with multiple teammates and enemies all moving around so much, so moving fast between two enemies will keep them guessing, as they need to be very careful to avoid friendly fire. Fast repositioning can also make them think that there's more than one of you in here. Chaos is ambiguity. Ambiguity is your best friend when you're alone and your worst enemy when you're on a team. When you're alone, everyone's your enemy. You can shoot anything that moves. Now, by controlling the situation up until this point, I haven't given them the opportunity to get much information out of the situation on my end. Now, if they swing that door open, they're going to have lots of angles to clear before they can lock onto you. But if you listen, close doors, and reposition, you'll know exactly where they're coming from and when. Again, it's all about control. The more I try to take control of the situation, the more I'm able to start moving chess pieces around the board and try to capitalize on a mistake from the enemies. Now, I can't let them regroup and plan an attack, so to keep the pressure on, I pop the door open and throw a grenade. Now, as I do so, pay close attention to my movement as I'm doing this. 
I move along with the radius of the opening door, not allowing the enemy to get a good angle on me from pretty much anywhere if they're honed in on the door while I unpin the grenade. Now after tossing the nade into the other room, I realize it didn't bounce how I expected, so I ensure that I shut the door to again maintain as much control over the situation as possible and prevent any shrapnel from hitting me through the doorway. Now I also heard threat number two around the corner to the left by the vending machines, so I know that I've bought myself a few seconds while the grenade rolls and explodes before I have to worry about a threat from this side of the room. If they push now and try to open the door, they'd almost certainly die. Now I can hear what I presume to be threat number one running away from the grenade and rotating back towards the opposite door. Now I realize it's possible that there are more threats than I thought, or maybe the threat number two misread where the grenade was and is the running sound that I hear, so I prepare for the push from the opposite door from anyone unexpected. I find that enemies tend to push during moments like this, where gunfire starts or explosions go off, to try to capitalize on the mayhem. Now after the explosion I feel uncomfortable with my back to the other door, so I start to push towards the opposite side to reposition and try to get a better view on both sides, and at the very same time the door opens right in front of me. Now based on the timing of this relative to the sound I heard earlier, that means that either threat number two was the one running I heard, or there's a third threat present. Now we never have complete information. We always need to use our prior experience to fill in some of the gaps in an attempt to predict how the scenario is most likely to play out and act on that. Preparing for the most common courses of action won't always lead to the best play, but more often than not, it will be better than nothing. And very often when teams are pushing you from different angles amidst a chaotic situation and a door swings open like this, the most common things that happen are 1. They push aggressively and try to catch you off guard, hoping you didn't hear the door open, or 2. They'll throw a grenade into the room and fall back. Now here's where the cost-benefit analysis comes in. If he pushes and peeks and I'm not prepared, I'm dead. If he throws a grenade and falls back, I'll at least have some time to assess where the grenade is going to land and move accordingly, so I might die, but this is actually less scary to me. Now it's also possible that there's an infinite number of alternative things that might happen, but I couldn't think of any right now that are more of a threat than number one, so I act as if number one is going to happen. By laying down a line of fire like this, I'm either going to prevent him from pushing, buying me time to get to the door and close it, and reassess the situation, or he'll push into the fire not having enough time to realize it's centered directly on him which is what happened in this case. Keeping the fire aimed at head level is extremely important here, because if he pushes me, it's going to be fast, which means it won't be prone or crouched. Now the time to kill on Tarkov is so small that every aim duel you take with an enemy can end with a single bullet. So if someone's going to be the one to do it, I want it to be me. If he goes for leg meta, I win. If he goes for center of mass, I win. If he goes for head, well, I'm at the whim of the netcode gods. Now if he doesn't push me, he either fell back and isn't a direct threat anymore, or he's waiting prone or crouched. Because of this, I point fire here rather than aiming down sights, so that I can see if he or anyone else instead is prone or crouching in the doorway. I consider aiming down sights with a sight like this in close quarters more of a liability than not, simply because of how much of my field of view it blocks. Now I pie the corner, keeping my eyes on both major areas where threats will be coming from. I know there's someone directly to me left outside of the door, but it's possible that a totally different threat could also be pushing from across the main lobby area, or the vending machine kai could be rotating wide around the lobby and could peek from the second doorway. Now again, it's extremely common that enemies just pour in one at a time to try to get a jump on someone, especially when their teammate's screaming, I'm dead, I'm dead, so I try to prepare for this while working my way towards the door. Now enough time has passed since I got any solid information. I still don't know if there's one or two more threats, so I close the door and try to reset, to again maintain control over the situation. Now while I'm stupidly reading Twitch chat in the middle of this fight, I hear a subtle thump of a footstep on wood to my right. I'm assuming this is the same threat I heard earlier. Did you hear it? Using the same logic as before, I lay down a base of fire in case they decide to push around the corner towards me. Now, it's really important to note that this course of action could have really backfired here, and was honestly my biggest mistake during this engagement. Now if the vending machine guy was where I heard him last, I would have taken to the bullet to the back of my head almost definitely. Fortunately for me, I didn't get punished for this mistake, and we can all learn from it. Now he didn't push me, but I'm cognizant of the fact that I'm very likely low on ammo in my existing magazine, so I decide to reload to one of the older magazines with the understanding that it could have half or less left in it, so I need to be extremely careful about my ammo management. So I reload and push across to the opposite side of the room, continuing the back and forth tactic to try to catch them off guard, and maybe catch them looking in the wrong direction. Now I heard a grenade land in one of two places, either directly in front or behind me. 
Now, if it's behind me, that means that nobody's going to be behind me without being in serious danger of being blown up. So I assume that all my current threats are going to be in front of me. Now, if it's in front of me, I want to try and be a little cheeky here and time this just right so I can capitalize on the explosion and the dust and shrapnel flying around a split second before, using it almost like a smokescreen. I have a pretty decent internal timer around when the explosions are going to happen, so I feel pretty confident enough to anticipate the explosion and push shortly after. Sometimes you need to take the high-risk, high-reward strategy to regain the upper hand in a one-versus-many situation. Let's watch that again to see how my timing was. Okay, so that was a bit closer than I had intended, but again, a little bit of luck never hurt anybody. Now my eye is immediately caught by the tree in the corner, and I promptly fill it with that precious ammo that I've been trying to conserve. Getting a little spastic here, I decide to calm down and reset again so I can end this in the next few moves. Now I realize now that there are still two discrete sets of footsteps, so this was at least a 1v3 after all. Now it sounds like they're splitting up and trying to pinch me. The most imminent threat is the person in front of me. They can peek literally at any moment, but the person on my right needs to move a bit, and I'll absolutely hear them push me, so I prepare for the push from the threat on 12. Note here that I'm crouched and leaning to try to make the position of my head as unpredictable as possible. Standing at an unusual spot in the room, attempting to be at an unpredictable off angle, as most people hide in corners, and also ensuring to keep my laser on the wall inside the room so they don't know I'm holding this angle. I'm ready to flick to the doorway if they push. Now at this point I didn't realize that there had been another grenade thrown, but it looks like it was a bad toss. It's possible that the threat in front of me was caught in the blast, but worst case scenario than they would have to have moved around away from the explosion, uh, so I know that they're no longer the most imminent threat. I also realized that I need to prevent getting pinched in the next few seconds, so in order to isolate the fights as 1v1s, I decide now is the time to take the fight with the guy to my right. Now whether I caught him by surprise and all that noise, or he got netcoded, being aggressive paid off here again, as he did not have a chance to return any fire before I put him down. Now pay attention to the positioning of my aim. Always try to keep your metaphorical crosshair at head level is one of the most important skills to maintain. Doing this allows you to move your hand very little to hit your target. Your vertical alignment is already taken care of, you just need to do some minor horizontal adjustments and you're already there. Here again, I'm ready for the anticipated push. Now my flick wasn't good enough, and I know that this mag is likely almost empty as well, so I need to reposition again to give me enough time to reload. But then I remember I already reloaded once, and I'm pretty sure that the last mag was almost empty from the previous fight, so I think it's time for plan B. So what do I have as a secondary weapon? Nothing? Okay then. Plan C. What's in the bag? Oh. Another bag. How about plan D? Okay, finally a gun. Now this is a gun that I looted earlier along with the vest full of mags that are almost definitely full here, so this should easily get me through the remainder of the fight. Now I quickly alt click the gun to equip it and decide to be aggressive once again to try to catch them off guard, as this is the most passive player so far and I'm feeling pretty spicy at this point. Now I figure the most likely place he's going to be is in the corner by the tree I shot earlier, holding the angle as he probably saw me run across that little hallway to the lobby. Now rather than slow peek the corner where many players would be sitting there with their crosshairs trained, I designed to be a little bit unpredictable and hop out wide to try to catch him off guard while I'm in the process of equipping my gun. So I misread that situation a little bit. For starters, he rotated through the room, not around the hallway, and second, I didn't realize that my gun was folded, the flashlight was on, and you can't see because of the camera covering it, but I accidentally put the gun in semi-auto when I wanted to put it in full auto, but it already was. Now at this point he thinks he's got the upper hand. He just shot me in the back and is likely expecting me to be running away. So I instead take advantage of the presumed aggression by getting ready for the push. Now I pre-fired at the door, again laying down a base of fire hoping that he would push into it, to which he did, and again, crosshair positioning was key. Look how little I had to adjust. So at this point, I'm pretty sure I've eliminated all the threats, so I can now rejoice in the epicness of that shit show of a fight. Let's watch it one more time, uninterrupted, to see the decision-making process I just outlined in real time. Thanks for watching. Right on, Punisher. Thank you, man. I'm dead. I'm so dead.
Fuck off, dude. I'm, I just got stuck. I got stuck and I die because of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>